So why am I moving my linear scale from the DRO on my lathe to the back side of the slide? Well, at the moment when I want to turn a part at uh, a bigger diameter than about 60 millimeters, um, the linear scale gets in the way. And theoretically I could turn like 100 and 240 millimeter diameter parts on this lathe and I really want to have that capability. And because of that, I am moving it to the back, even though I will have less reach with the tailstock. But I think that trade will be worth it for me. But still, to um, minimize the loss of uh, distance or reach that I uh, am able to uh, get with the tailstock, I um, don't want to mount it. The same way I mounted it on the front, but I want to mount it um, vertically. This will give me about uh, 20 millimeters uh, more space that I can use uh, for the tailstock. I've uh, tried to come up with a few different ways of mounting it, and the best one I've come up with was uh, mounting it vertically in the back because I lose the least amount of travel overall and there are also some uh, mounting holes that I can use in the back and also on the right hand side of the slide. For making the mount I need uh, three parts. Here I'm making the first part in a CAD. This is the, the part that will mount the, that the slide part of the linear encoder will mount to. Um, I'm using Fusion 360 for my CAD and CAM work um, because it's the most convenient and I have learned it for uh, the last five years. I've used it so I'm very... Uh, I know how it works really good. At least uh, the CAD part, the CAM, I'm still new to it because uh, I don't have the CNC for uh, so long um, until now. And uh, here I try to make it the part so I only need the uh, one end mill and not the uh, need to make a tool change. Now machining. Um, to machine a part you always have to uh, set the machines, um, the part zero point. Um, for these parts um, I used a very pointy um, engraving bit that uh, I still had from uh, my last uh, CNC mill um, to point it just visually uh, to the corner as, as good as uh, possible um, so I can zero the X and the, the Y axis and then for the Z axis I just have to uh, change the, the tool out for, uh, for the end mill and then uh, I just uh, drive down the z-axis on the part and uh, with a small piece of paper I can then uh, zero the, the height and I measure the, the thickness of the paper and then I put in uh, OK as soon as the, the end mill touches the paper I just put in OK now it's 0 0.08 millimeters above the surface and after that I turn on the spindle manually because I have not connected uh, the spindle to the controller yet and then I just start the program. And here it uh, starts and it goes up to um, to the position for the Z sensor, for the length, tool length sensor. But because I have only one tool here it wouldn't be needed. But that's just uh, what the machine does now. Because I have tool length sensor I would have to um, change the settings every time. That's not really worth my time. So I, I just um, then continue. Yes, tool change, and then I just uh, OK and start the program. Um, for these parts, I almost exclusively use the spiral drilling operation on Fusion 360. Here you can uh, see that the mist cooling system, which I installed last week, is uh, working perfectly. Um, it really helped here. Um, especially to blow out the, the chips that formed in the deep holes here. 
And uh, the problem is at the moment I have to activate it by hand, so I have a, like a trigger and I need to pull the trigger to um, lubricate it. Um, because of that I has, have to be there. And uh, definitely upgrade I will do is um, change this to uh, just a ball valve that I can turn on. And then it just lubricates itself. Um, here it's actually milling the, the relief cut, the relief uh, hole for, for the screw head. And uh, I have noticed uh, if I mill like this, so almost the whole diameter and then spiral down, um, the hole gets a little bit oversized. And if I uh, go to the full depth in a hole, for example, to make it uh, bigger and then spiralize outwards, the hole gets a little bit uh, smaller than the, the, the measurement, the, the size I put in. So um, I can use this knowledge to uh, make uh, more accurate parts in the future. Here I opted for the program to uh, go 5mm down and then uh, spiral out to the final diameter rather than uh, go 10mm deep and then spiral out to the final diameter because um, the end mill I'm using is uh, about 3mm, it's a 1 8 inch uh, bit I uh, bought on AliExpress like a few years ago for my last CNC mill. Um, and I don't think that it would be able to cut 10 millimeters deep. And for the second and third part, I just repeat the same process. Um, here I input the wrong thickness of the paper, so the milling bit actually um, just plunged down straight into the material about uh, 0.8 millimeters, because I put in uh, 0.8 millimeters above the surface instead of 0.08. So. Uh, that wasn't great, but at least the bit didn't break, so I guess it was fine. Machining all the parts was surprisingly um, successful. It, it worked uh, flawlessly, um, for the most part, except <laughs> There's that I made. The machine worked uh, as it should. So did the software and everything else. Um, the only errors that occurred were uh, because of me. <laughs> and for anybody who uh, wonders um, how uh, accurate my machine is. Um, with this small end mill it's uh, surprisingly accurate. Um, this hole should be 13 millimeters and uh, if I get it right it was um, about two hundredths of a millimeter um, smaller. So that's what I meant with uh, if I go uh, with a dynamic cut from the inside out. It's a bit smaller. When I uh, cut from the top down in a spiral, it's like six hundredths of a millimeter bigger. But that's still, uh, I think, very accurate, at least for uh, this machine. And now, after I uh, made the last part and uh, tapped all the holes in the parts, um, I can put it together the bracket that uh, will hold the sensor um, and uh, well I guess <laughs> I will see you next week um, where I will redo this part um, if you have any idea what went wrong
you can write them in the comments. Um, there are two errors that are made here. Um, and with that, thank you for watching and until next week. I would also really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel.